What's up everybody, Jeff with Polar Pro, and today I woke up extra early to try to get some good light for you guys. Now I'm gonna cover five quick tips on how to use ND filters with your Mavic 2 Pro. All right, so this looks like a good spot to set up for today's video. Now tip one is how to select your neutral density filter strength. Now we have ND filters ranging from ND4 all the way up to ND10, and it's very important that you choose the correct one. So the first thing that you need to do is determine which frame rate you're shooting in. So for today, I'll be shooting in 30 frames per second. And the next thing we do is from that frame rate, we determine what our shutter speed is going to be. And according to the 180 degree rule of shutter, we want that to be double frame rate. So if you're shooting at 24 frames per second, you want your shutter speed at 1 50th. If you're at 30, like we are today, 1 60th. Or if you're shooting in 60 frames per second, you want your shutter speed at 1 1 20th. So now we set our shutter speed to 1 60th for me here today with 30 frames per second. And you can see here that now we are three stops overexposed after that shutter speed swing. So now we have to install a four stop ND16 filter. Now that brings us to a negative 0.3 EV and that's perfect. We want anything in between negative 0.3 and positive 0.3 EV. Now if it's over that, so if it's negative 0.7, we have to install a lighter filter. And if it's plus 0.7, you need to install a darker filter. So lighting got a little tough at that last spot, so we're gonna move over to a different zone and continue the video. All right, so tip two, choosing ND versus NDPL filters for your composition. So we have two different styles of filters here. We've got the straight neutral density filters, NDs, and we have the ND neutral density polarizer filters, NDPL filters. So the straight ND filters are just gonna reduce light not altering any of the characteristics of the light that it's reducing. Whereas the NDPL filters are actually gonna reduce light and also polarize it, which reduces reflections and increases color fidelity and contrast. So the straight ND filters are not gonna reduce any reflections, but sometimes you actually wanna leave those in your composition and make it look more natural without boosting any color fidelity or contrast. Which is why I like to have both ND and NDPL filters in my bag so I have the option to choose between the two different looks depending on the shoot. All right, let's run this line. All right, let's keep it interesting for you guys and we'll move locations. So instead of squatting next to that cactus, let's uh, squat next to this tree. Tip number three, adjusting polarization. So it can be really challenging to polarize each specific scene when you're flying a drone. So on all of our NDPL filters, we've included a little white marker line and that indicates the horizontal or linear polarization setting when that lines at the very top. Now, this doesn't mean that it's the maximum polarization angle for each specific scene. It's just a good kind of broad general setting, kind of the same way that sunglasses are lined up where it's good for most scenarios. Now, if you wanna polarize each scene at a maximum level, it can be quite tedious because you have to rotate the filter until you find that maximum polarization level where the most glare and most reflections are reduced for each specific angle that the drone's pointing relative to the sun. So that means that every time you run a line, you're gonna have to polarize that line, come back, land the drone, and then change angles polarize that line, run that specific angle. So it can get pretty tedious, which is why we started marking the NDPL filters with that horizontal line. Well, alrighty then, moving on to tip number four, the best camera settings for shooting with an ND filter. 
Now I like to make sure first things first, everything is in manual mode. So nothing is going to swing or change on us unless we tell it to. So the first thing I'm gonna set is my ISO. I'm gonna put that over at 100 for the cleanest image. Then I'm gonna move aperture either between 2.8 and four, which the camera system is sharpest at. And then I'm gonna change it into D log color profile. So that's gonna increase the scene dynamic range allowing me to get more information out of the shadows and the highlights. Now that was a short tip, but nonetheless, very important. Tip number five, monitoring your EV. So in between the time of your initial exposure reading on the ground, maybe you're flying for a little bit, there's a good chance that lighting might change. So you do need to monitor your EV. And if you see that swing either to plus one or minus one, you need to do something quick. Otherwise you're gonna be doing some serious post-processing work. Now option one is to just simply land the drone and install the correct filter for that lighting change. Whereas option two, you just leave the bird in the air and make some exposure adjustments via the controller. So if I was at negative one EV, I would just change ISO from 100 to 200 and that would be just fine. Now, if it was at negative two, I probably wouldn't go from 100 to 400 ISO because at 400 things start to get a bit noisy. So I would just land it at that point and make the filter change. Now, if it was at plus one EV, then you're gonna have to change aperture from 2.8 to four, or if you were at four already to 5.6. But if it was at plus two, I wouldn't push aperture over 5.6 because you're gonna start to see image degradation and sharpness fall off above a aperture of 5.6. Well, there you have it. Five tips on using ND filters with your Mavic 2 Pro. I'm Jeff with Polar Pro and I'll see you on the next one.